For me, Nights into Dreams holds a lot of nostalgia and a special place in my heart. I remember playing this game on the Saturn all those long years ago. Yeah, I'm old. Nights into Dreams can be a fast-paced game. What was originally released on the Sega Saturn from the same developers of Sonic Team. I'll be showing the HD version or the remake one in this vid. The main characters is a jester called Knights and these two kids called Elliot and Clarice. The story is about when two kids have dreams that become nightmares from anxiety. When one has a basketball game and the other one is about to sing in front of judges and in the dream world they have their confidence taken away from them in the shape of these star orbs and then they meet Knights who helps them overcome their fears by getting their star orbs back and all this happens in the dream world. For the controls they are simple and easy to use except can be a bit tricky at times when I started to get better at the game and trying to beat my own score with the fast gameplay and that spin dash that's when I found out how sensitive the analog sticks can be and mastering this game is on another level there were so many times that this game made my thumb ache with all the loop to loops and the acrobatics what Knights does it was like ah. <laughs> yeah. And I would recommend using the 3D controller on a satin version than the normal gamepad. I found using the normal gamepad made my thumb really hurt. It really made it sore. I still can't control it very well using the 3D controller. You play as Elliot or Clarice until you get to Knights who's in prison in this altar. And if time runs out, you turn back into Elliot or Clarice. Each level has a time limit before Knights runs out of power. And you turn back to being Elliot or Clarice with a clock that follows you around and try and captures you. And if it does, it's game over. Nevertheless, if you make it to the altar where Knights is, you turn back into being Knights. The main goal of the game is to collect these blue orbs and get them back to the capsule. It usually takes about 20 orbs to break the capsule to get the power star orb and get them back to the altar in time or keep going around to add up more points. With these rings and the stars and these special rings that add high points with these, it's all about performing as many tricks that knights can do in a certain amount of time. And this is also a way out to refill knights boost meter with the points that you get throughout the level. And each star orb that you collect and get back to the altar, Knights has to then go after the next star orb, and each round it gives you a score of A, B, and C, and D. I think there are around about five rounds in each stage in total of going around in a circuit that changes course each lap before facing the boss. And if you want to unlock the last two levels, you've got to get C or higher on all of the stages. The boss fights are fun to defeat, but can be a pain trying to figure out how to defeat them. Like the cat mouse boss fight. It's like, I just couldn't figure that one out and I did it by mistake. Although I did find them very inventive. And one of my favorite boss fights was this all what you kept on throwing through a wall. It's just like, oh, I don't even know what to call this. There are two characters that you can pick, Elliot or Clarice. There are four levels on each character. So a total of eight levels. Only the last two levels do feel very similar. Honestly, I think they are the same, where it has the same boss fight as well. On the contrary, that last level's got to be my favourite level, especially with that music what plays with knights. And I couldn't help to get in the rhythm of that level. <laughs>
levels I found unique and have their own charm to them where one minute I could be a fish, then it goes to a top down view, to driving the go-kart, and then one weird round physics going on here. The developers knew how to keep things fresh and it shows with the inspiration of these level designs. The game rewards you for remembering the level's layout, so I knew where the majority of the points were after a while. The game is meant to be played multiple times to beat your own score, like an arcade title where it shows the scoreboard at the end of the level, and I found this to be very addictive to beat myself. I didn't even have a chance to mess with the script yet. You have the option to play the modern version or the Saturn adaptation on the Steam version, what I thought was a good idea, and showing these side by side which one is the true Saturn version, I had trouble telling the difference in the video editing production bit. And on the Steam version, I had to think for a bit how to set up the controller and the resolution on my PC, where it's done in-game folder. And I haven't done anything like this in some time, where I had to go into the game folder and set it that way, where now all games seem to let you do that in the game menu. The graphics hold up and still looks beautiful for today's standards with its colourful level design and the remake version smooths everything out and makes things look a bit more better and upgrades the graphics entirely. All the cutscenes, they are impressive on the Sega Saturn, although these are pre-rendered scenes and I like that the modern version kept true to that and they just upscaled it and kept to the original design. The music is alright, however that last level soundtrack has got to be my favourite one where I could remember it after completing the game and it got stuck into my head and I felt like I could dance to it. <laughs> Before long the game is, it took me around about an hour to complete, yet this game is meant to be played multiple times. Now we move on to Christmas Nights. I remember that this came with the Sega Saturn magazine and it would be um, disc glued to the front of it. And I would really consider this the first DLC that I ever encountered. Instead of digital downloaded content, it was this content <laughs> back then. Yeah, it came with a magazine. I thought it was brilliant that it introduced the story and what was going on with this comic book intro. There is only one level, what is Spring Valley, but it's Christmas themed. And with all the Christmas songs and everything, if you play as Clarice, it's pretty much exactly the same as Spring Valley on the original Knights game. But if you play as Elliot, it is Spring Valley and it is the same level, but the course is ever so slightly different of where the rings are and all that. I thought that this was a nice little gift with Nights into Dreams, it was included with the digital download of the game. So in the end, I had a lot of fun revisiting Nights into Dreams and I would definitely recommend it if you're a Sam fan. So have you played it, what do you think of it? Leave it in the comments below. Until next game, I'm off.